Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Bhavya Vaina, Consultant Surgical Oncologist at Sri Puja Multi Speciality Hospital, Hapsi Guda. So today we are going to discuss about a very commonly, I mean, I keep getting a lot of messages and a lot of calls even from my practicing colleagues asking for the same question. This is about HPV vaccination. Because of the media promotion and all, now everybody has a minimal awareness that HPV vaccination is important, but they don't have the exact details. So I'll be giving a brief overview of what exactly is happening. So first you have to understand what HPV virus is. So HPV is basically a virus which can be caused by infection. This is an infection. What happens once the infection happens is these infection generally they just go away on themselves. Most of the times your immunity will take care of it. But there are times when this infection persists, it becomes a chronic infection and it can cause multiple conditions. Most of us know that HPV virus generally causes cervical cancer. But we all we do not know that lot of us do not know that HPV vaccine also causes other cancers like the penis cancer in men also the HPV virus causes cancers like penis cancer and uh, anogenital cancers can be caused by HPV virus and oropharyngeal cancer that is the back of your throat can also be affected by HPV virus. So these are the other cancers which HPV virus infection can cause. And there are some other benign conditions, they are not cancerous but they are little troublesome that is called anogenital warts. So generally there is a clear cut division, there are hundreds of strains but there are few very high risk strains and few are, few are low risk strains. So what we try to avoid is for cancer prevention we call them high risk strains but there are other low risk strains which prevent anogenital warts. So when you are taking vaccine generally the, nowadays the trend is to prevent all the infections like why just when you are taking a vaccine in a single shot if you can prevent cancers and as well as non-cancerous conditions. So they people try to take uh, the vaccine which prevents everything. But I will be discussing about types of vaccines available later on. So one thing which I want to make very clear to everybody is that HPV vaccination is indicated for both men and women. As I said that there are few cancers which are caused even in men. Then what is the age at which you can take a vaccine? So ideally the vaccine has to be taken before the first sexual intercourse. First sexual intercourse, why I mean sexual intercourse is generally HPV vaccine is generally virus is generally transmitted through sexual intercourse. So before your first encounter that is when you want your body to be full of the antibodies. So at what age are these vaccinations to be taken? So ideally you have to understand when is when can you get infected. You can get infected through HPV virus generally happens through sexual intercourse. So we want you to be ready with all the antibodies all the immunity you have by the time you get infected and infection is generally through sexual contact. So before your first sexual intercourse we want you to be already immunized. That is why we want everybody between 11 to 15 years ideally to be vaccinated or sometimes we can even start catching up kids earlier that is we can start the vaccination right at the age of 9 years also. So 9 to 15 years is the best time that you can get vaccinated. If you do not if you did not get a vaccination done during this period then the next period is from 16 to 26 years. So 16 to 26 years also every man and woman it is an important vaccine to take up and you have to take a dose. After 26 years then the debate starts from 27 years to 45 years is when we consider you already infected with some or the other virus. The different as I said there are different strains you might have already been infected. So there is a debate where the vaccine might not be very effective that is why there is confusion whether to take it or not take it. So for you to understand this is a clinical decision making, shared decision making. We make the patient sit with us and then discuss. As I said that the virus enters through sexual contact. People who are having like homosexual, if you are in a polygamous relation that is you have a chance of getting this infected by another virus. So if you have a single sexual partner, whatever they have you might be already having it and there is no chance of new infection probably. But if you are like likely to have a new sexual partner, you might be prone to get a new virus infection which you are already not infected with. So that is why uh, you can still consider to get a HPV vaccination done from 25 to 27 to 45 years. That is a personal choice but the effectiveness is really doubtful because you have to remember that vaccination will only prevent infection. 
like it's it's very effective only before you are infected but once you are infected it is not a treatment at all it cannot stop the disease from growing any further it cannot stop anything else so the main point is you have a lot of strains you might be infected with one strain before it doesn't mean that you will not be infected with a different strain that is why we take a chance and try to vaccinate everybody after till 45 years and there are some uh, contraindications where you cannot get this vaccination done those contraindications are generally allergic reaction if you have any allergy previous history of allergy to a particular vaccination that is when you have to consider before getting vaccinated or sometimes during pregnancy we do not generally advise to take this vaccination so pregnancy is one of the contraindications and sometimes when you're very sick if you have some other sickness if you're severely weak affected and then weak that is when you we ask you to postpone the vaccination till you recover once you're fine and then you're recovered and then you can go back to your vaccination so these are the age groups now next question comes what is the doses how many doses should we take so when you're giving it between 9 to 15 years you have to take since just two doses and the doses are generally today and then after six months so two doses zero and six if you're getting vaccinated from 16 to 45 there are three doses generally these doses are generally zero now and then after one or two months and then after six months so this is the dosing schedule which is generally followed and if you miss some dose if you already got one or two dose and then you have not you did not get a third dose so you can still go back and take third dose even after a very long period of gap in between so you do not have you have to complete the three doses if you are above 16 or two doses if you are below 16 that is very important and the next question comes what are the types of vaccines available commercially now in india so Previously, there were very few vaccinations available. There were just two vaccines available, which was a bivalent vaccination that has two strains, which is effective, if it, high risk strains, which it is effective against. And then there was quadrivalent vaccine, which is effective against four strains. And then now there is a Gardasil vaccine, which is nanovalent vaccine, which is effective, which has seven strains, which are cancer preventive. And it is effective against two strains, which cause anogenital warts. So the main difference between all these three things is cost. But if you want to be the effectiveness against cancer is equal in all the three vaccinations. The only difference is cost. So if you're economically, if you have no issues, generally Gardas and nanovalent vaccine costs around 10,000 per dose. So if you don't have any issues economically in a single shot, you can just go ahead and get the nanovalent vaccine, which covers against anogenital warts also. But Remember that just because you cannot afford a 10,000 vaccine, you should not just give up on the vaccines. The bivalent and quadrivalent vaccines which are little cheaper are also equally effective against cancer because cancer is the main goal which we started with. So these are the types of vaccines and uh, there is a new vaccine Sarvavac which is produced by Bharat Biotech which is included in the national immunization program now national immunization program is trying to cover only girl childs because cervical cancer burden is really really high in india and we want to target in girl child we our target now is to reduce a, that is the government's target to reduce cancer incidence all over but as an individual if you take a person our my target will be generally to prevent cancer in me so everybody not just a girl or boy is eligible to take a vaccine these are the vaccinations so whenever you go to your pediatrician or a uh, lot of people ask for these questions and now you can start up and just go to the nearest center and get a vaccination done make sure that the temperature is well maintained in the center because it is affect the refrigeration process is important and you can even combine this vaccine with some other vaccine because hpv vaccine is not a live virus vaccine and uh, there is another doubt which i commonly encounter is that See, I am doctor, I am already HPV vaccinated. Do I have to get cervical cancer screening done? So remember that nothing is 100% sure in life. Even HPV vaccine prevents your disease risk almost by 70 to 90%. But then you still have the 10% risk where you can develop cancer. So that is where screening is very important. Screening protocol that is getting a cervical cancer pap smear done or HPV DNA testing done is the same even if you are vaccinated or not vaccinated we'll discuss about the screening protocol in the next videos and if you have any more questions about hpv vaccination please free to comment in the section below we'll discuss further thank you